So things are actually starting to get scary. In just the past few days, we've had Shoto Douglas, an AI researcher at Anthropic, warning about a full white collar collapse by 2027, Anthropic CEO Dario Amode hitting multiple news outlets, saying AI could wipe out 50% of entry level white collar jobs in the next one to five years. Demis Hassabis, the usually reserved CEO of Google DeepMind, saying we could see AI agents working with us and even earning money for us within four to five years. And then there was this clip that somehow got completely lost in the news cycle. One of the scariest conversations I was privy to was one a friend of mine who's a billionaire in London. He knows the CEO of one of the biggest AI companies in the world who I can't name. And he said, by the way, what he tells me in private is not what he's saying publicly. Yeah. I he he said to me yeah. that what this particular CEO thinks is going to happen with AI is pretty horrific. Mm -hmm. And the CEO of this big AI company is totally cool with it. He, it's it's and it's horrific what he thinks is about to happen. And then when I watch this guy do his like online talks and give his yeah. opinion, he's so nuanced and everything will be fine and he's an AI optimist. Then I heard this scenario at this kitchen table in East London from his friend about what he really thinks and it was chilling. Yeah. Like actually the lack of empathy. Yeah. That makes sense to me. The like uh, the obsession with power was shocking to me. Yeah. The obsession with power and money and all the rest of it. Yeah. So yeah, that's from the Diary of a CEO podcast. And look, who knows how accurate it is, but it got me thinking, who is he talking about? I mean, there's only really a handful of people this could be. Dario's probably ruled out since he's literally sounding the alarm on live TV. Then there's Sam Altman, Demis Hassabis, Sundar Pichai, Elon Musk. If we speculate a bit here, I'd say Sam Altman definitely fits. He's been warning about AI risk for years, talking about alignment, existential threats, and the need for regulation. But at the same time, he's aggressively pushing the frontier and talks a lot about the benefits this technology will bring. So he definitely has a more nuanced view on it. And I could see why even if he did secretly believe something pretty horrific was coming, as the CEO of OpenAI, it would be extremely beneficial for him not to say anything. And honestly, that probably applies to everyone on this list. Now, Demis Hassabis is my next best guess, as DeepMind is literally based out of London, and in the clip, he said it was one of his friends in London. Demis has also been saying some pretty wild things lately. I actually made a video this week covering his recent interviews, where he talks about universal high income, AI agents becoming your coworkers, and Google going all in on AGI. So definitely check that one out if you haven't already. But again, his timelines are shortening and he's being a little bit more open. But as the CEO of Google DeepMind, he's under immense pressure not to sound the alarm publicly. So yeah, those are my best guesses. I could definitely be wrong, but I'm curious. Who do you guys think it is? Let me know in the comments, and of course, we'll be keeping tabs on this. Now, the fact is though, every week, we're getting closer and closer to a massive labor disruption. Some are already sounding the alarm, like Dario Amode, who claims half of entry-level white-collar work is at risk in the next one to five years, and that the unemployment rate could jump to 10 to 20 percent. Or Imad Mostak, co-founder and former CEO of Stability AI, who claims an economic shock way larger than COVID is coming, and that middle management will be hit hardest. Meanwhile, the top AI labs are moving faster than ever, and it's because they literally don't have a choice. Just this week, for example, DeepSeek R1 got an update. China's open source model is now pretty much on par with the best of the best models, like OpenAI's O3 and Google's Gemini 2.5 Pro. But here's the thing, it's also about 95% cheaper. And again, it's open source. So when you've got companies like OpenAI and Google pouring billions into their models, all fighting for the same market share, and suddenly a free model from China shows up that's nearly just as good, it changes everything. It's forcing the entire industry to move faster, push out updates quicker, and take bigger risks. And that's a big part of why AI progress feels so insane right now.
and why it's only going to get faster from here. Speaking of competition, it's not just in the commercial AI space. China is now ramping up its military AI applications too. This week, they unveiled something straight out of a sci-fi movie, a massive mothership drone capable of launching swarms of smaller autonomous drones mid-flight. They're calling it the Juishin SS UAV. And yeah, it's kind of insane. I mean, at this point, nothing is safe from automation, not even war. And as the AI race heats up in general, new players are entering which is only compounding the acceleration. One of the biggest emerging forces right now is the Middle East, specifically Saudi Arabia and the UAE, both of whom have already poured hundreds of billions into US tech, AI infrastructure, and chips. And now, in collaboration with OpenAI, and as part of OpenAI's Stargate project, every citizen in the UAE is getting free access to ChatGPT+. All right, so with all that said, not everything this week was drone swarms and disappearing jobs. Yes, the risks are real and they're seemingly ramping up, and leaders are clearly rattled, but there are also glimmers of how this technology might actually help people. And while those types of stories were buried beneath all the shocking warnings, here are a few I think are worth highlighting. First up, we've got MedGemma. MedGemma is Google's most capable open source model for multimodal medical text and image comprehension. It's essentially a multimodal diagnostics tool, and there's not much information out yet, but this could be a big step toward making advanced medical tools more accessible, especially in underserved regions. Healthcare is probably where we'll see some of the most impactful benefits of AI. Now, while we're talking about Google, Terence Tao, widely considered one of the greatest mathematicians alive, just joined the Google team working on Alpha Evolve. Alpha Evolve is the self-improving AI system Google revealed just before their I.O. conference. And honestly, it didn't get nearly the attention it deserved. I already made an entire video breaking it down, but to give you the highlights, this AI system managed to improve a 50-year-old math algorithm using techniques no human had ever seen before. It also redesigned parts of Google's in-house AI chip architecture, which was then used in their latest generation TPU. And it even fine-tuned one of their own Gemini models, the same model it runs on. So yeah, this system literally showed early signs of recursive self-improvement. And now, with Terence Tao joining the team, I can't wait to see how far they're going to push it. One of the other stories that caught my eye was Boston Dynamics dropping a new demo of their humanoid robot Atlas. No, it's not doing parkour this time. It's actually showing something way more practical, generalization. They're training Atlas to navigate complex environments and interact with real world objects, with the goal of eventually deploying it in factories, warehouses, and even homes. It's not just about movement anymore. It's about understanding context, recognizing what an object is, where it should go, and how to adjust on the fly. Fully generalizable robots is clearly the end goal with this. To have humanoid robots that you can drop into any environment and that just work. No custom programming, no special setup, just plug and play labor. And the benefits? Well, they're kind of endless. From elder care, to hazardous jobs, to mobility assistance, or even just having your own personal butler slash assistant. I mean, who isn't going to want one of these? But as exciting and honestly kind of wild as all this sounds, we're still running into the strange, unpredictable edges of AI. Because then there was this clip. You know, it's a weird thing. It's like... <laughs> he drinking the wine? We don't circulate no, but this he's too much in yeah. the AI community. Uh, but the, not just our models, but all models tend to do better if you threaten them. If you threaten them. Like with physical violence. <laughs> yes. But like that's, people feel weird about that, so we don't really talk about that. But yeah, I like, was threatening them with not being fabulous, and it responded to that as well. Yeah, that's, <laughs> historically you just say like, oh, I'm going to kidnap you if you don't blah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. yeah, they actually... Can I ask you a more... But it, but it, hold so yeah, that's where we're at. Robots learning to generalize models that improve when threatened, and CEOs 
publicly, and maybe not so publicly, warning about the massive disruption ahead. We're living in a moment where incredible progress and deep uncertainty are happening side by side, and it's only accelerating. Anyway, if you want to follow along while I try to make sense of all this, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I don't have all the answers, but I do have a lot of questions, and they're probably pretty similar to the ones you've got. And again, if you've got a theory about who that CEO might be, drop it in the comments.